In this video, I want to give you a, a, a detailed training on how to use queries and lists as a means to target your market, to segment your contacts, to manage your contacts, and short to query and to list your contacts. Let's start with queries. A query is asking a question of the database. Could be questions like, what's the first name? What's the last name? What was the title of the contact? To give you an idea, everywhere on the query builder, you basically see a field, a operator, and a value. Field meaning I want to search in the title field or the first name field. Operator means I want this first name to be exactly is. That's different from contains, by the way. So, for example, if I was searching for Nicholas, I would need to match it exactly if my operator was is. If I change it to contains, then I can say NICH, or if I forgot whether or not I called this guy Nicholas or Nick, I can search for contains NIC, and both would match. That's our field, operators, and values. What we do to use the queries effectively is we compound data like this to create a usable query. So let's not search for first name is Nick. Let's look for everyone where role is not gatekeeper. So the first thing I want to do if I was going to do some marketing of any sort, a mailer or email, is I want to weed out those secretaries and gatekeepers that I have in my database. Role is not gatekeeper. Uh, maybe I'm only interested in people in the state of Indiana. State is IN, Indiana. Maybe I want to get even more specific, and I'm looking within 30 miles of my office's zip code. Up here under demographics, we can use any of the demographic fields that we track. So, for example, if you use annual sales or employees or the SIC codes as uh, demographic information, you can use that in your queries. I want to only find companies that have fewer than 10 employees. Under the other segmentation, we find other fields that are common in our account and contact details. Uh, for example, account manager or the other account roles. Um, so if you have multiple salespeople, you can weed this down to just accounts that are under your management or, or as you as the salesperson or there again we can change our operator and, and find everything that excludes me as the account manager. I'm going to turn that off. If the, if the field by the way or excuse me if the value is blank then we simply ignore that statement. Uh, lastly I'm going to go in and search for only customers. So I want to find where status is customer. So this is going to yield me any company that has fewer than 10 employees, is currently a customer, is in the state of Indiana, more specifically within 30 miles of our zip code, but it's not a gatekeeper, so it's going to be, be someone within the company that's not just a secretary. Let's see if I get any results. The results come up, we found 115 matching contacts in 86 different accounts. From here, I have some actions I can use, like recording a history entry, assigning a task. I can assign individually each person to uh, a postcard or to a campaign. I can add them to a list, which I'll show you in a minute. Or, most often, I'm going to use this list in the upper right-hand corner. Use this list gives me the options like sending an email, sending a text message, send a postcard, add to a campaign, mail merge, which would... Um, merge all the, the people on this list to a uh, an envelope or labels or something like that. Export to a CSV so I can use it anywhere else. I can use a chart tool which is currently in beta or I can do a global update. So now that we've found all the matching people in that criteria list that we compiled here, we can use use this list to do some action with all of the matches on our list. That's how you use the query tool. Now what are lists? Well, lists are ways of putting people together in a similar kind of grouping so that you can do actions with the entire uh, group, just like you would with a query, except lists are people who wouldn't necessarily fall on a query. For example, I serve on a board called the Incubators Board. This is a, uh, a, a 
basically a board of directors, if you will. And so there's not a there's not any one criteria that I could search for that pulls these people together and unites them. I manually put them on this list. Or um, let's see if I can find speakers at an event that I held last year. There's there's not a tag. There's not any any specific criteria that that tags somebody as being a speaker at that given event. So I just put them on a list to use them that way, and then I can recall that. You notice I have the same options, sending an email, um, doing all the different things I wanted to do with this list. So it serves the same purpose as a query, but it's more manual and more granular in how we get someone on there. So how do we get someone on these lists? Well, first of all, you have to create a list. Before you can manipulate people on and off lists, you have to create the list. So if I was going to create a list, I would name it and hit create. I can rename previously created lists and I can delete lists here as well. But if I wanted to add someone to a list, I simply look them up, which displays me the search results. Over to the left, I can, under their name, I can click on Add to a List. So I want to add this Nick Carter to this list. And I click Add, and I'm done. Of course, the other way to add someone to a list is from the Account Details page. Under the Account View, under Account Details, you see a link that says List Memberships. This will show you to which lists anyone in this account belongs. And if you want to, you can erase people from a list, remove their membership. So I just took myself off the list called Just Nick, which was probably created for demonstration purpose at some point in the past. And um, I can add people on this account to a list. So I want to add myself again to maybe the incubator's invite list. If I choose right now to add this account, address2, to, to the incubator's invite list, it will by default add both contacts, add both Chad and myself. But I can choose to only add this contact, and then I've narrowed it down to just me. And that's how we add people to a list. Last thing to comment, you will notice if you go to send a campaign, for example, and you want to send a postcard, it's going to ask you who you want to send it to, either a query or a list. So the first step in any process like this is actually using the query builder or the list tool to define the recipients of that campaign. Step one, define the recipients of your message. And all we're given here is the same old query builder that we've used before. Same is going to be true for tasks or history. If I want to add a task, the first thing it's going to ask me is, well, who are you adding the task to? Oh, well, I want to add a task to Chad Smith. So I can type that in, it will search for the matches, and it displays the matches on my search match page, or my search results. The only thing this does special is it automatically expands out our option for adding a history entry and highlights that field so that I know exactly where I need to go.